How's it going, everyone? This is Wimbo. Today we are going to finish the part two of our CGI compositing tutorials. For some of you following my Instagram, you know I've been pretty busy this week. I've been doing a lot of shoot.、Uh, but anyway, we are finally back. So in this part two of this tutorials, we are going to talk about the lightings.、Uh, you know we have. Uh, generally, build the scene and making sure the perspective, everything is match.、Uh, we even actually did some basic、uh, subject texture already for the for the scene, and we are going to focus on lighting today. And also, how to build the background because the pure white background is always something that people wanted to know for a typical classic、uh, product photography stuff. And also the props. So you know, we have some. Red ribbon flowing, flying around the scene. That's something that we are going to show you how to build that. And the very last part is going to to show you how to actually composite the entire renders with three D object and the images in the Photoshop. So, without further ado, let's get started.、Uh, let me drag it to the、uh, file that we have worked with last time. So this is the pretty much the scene that we have already built. And、this is just a reference image that eventually we want to have to have this kind of look. So as you can see here, we already have a, a general cylinder shape of items we just roughly、uh, built, and we have a floor and the background.、Uh, but if you go to the render view, it doesn't looks like that very well, simply because it's not pure white, and we are using a HDRI image as our lighting. So that's something that I've been <clears throat> talking to a lot of people about how to use CG,、uh, HDRI. This is never going to be your main light. You are supposed to be the person who control the light. It can be a very general feel, but for our purpose of building these scenes, I just need a overall a broad lighting and temporarily just kind of light the scene. So next thing we wanted to do is we wanted to build the, the lighting according to the image. So for this image, okay, this is the final result, and the the image I was I was created in the studio just shooting this actual products is using very simple uh, techniques. Uh, the backgrounds is, is illuminating using a light, and the foreground is actually just kind of a very uh, uh, glassy or reflective. Surface and to reflecting the the whole scene. So in in general, you need to have a really good、uh, clean background backlight, and also have a, a, a actual a fill of a key light from the left hand side, a slightly darker or less strong a strong fill light to kind of fill into the shadow of these areas. And that's pretty much it. So this is what we're going to build in our scene、uh, to, to replicate the same lighting. You may asking why we still need to do that since we already have a pretty beautiful a、uh, a product already been photographed. While the whole idea is replicating the lighting is actually helping these the props actually fit into the lighting just as the way the product was. So that in this so in this method, these items or these subjects are gonna be blended together seamlessly. So you want to have a really nice realistic. Stuff going on, so that's why that's the whole purpose of that. So a lot of time, I really want you to understand the the reason why we're doing that. So okay, let's get it started. So for the 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 background, so we definitely want to have a, just a light going on here. So this one we don't even have a texture yet. So the background. So what I I actually do, I just gonna hit uh, the uh, the plus sign to actually adding a new background. Okay, I'm just dragging. I'll give you some space to see what's going on here. So in here, you know, we have the principal P、uh, BSDF. This is like a default、uh, shader that you can you can use.、Uh, well, either you can do adding a emission shader, which is Shift A to adding an emission shader. So let's do emission shader. Type in emission shader. Yes, having that directly hook. Onto the surface, then that actually turning to a light. Okay, so the strangeness is not that strong, so we can actually do、uh, type five to actually make it brighter. As you can see, we have a light is coming in now. 
another way is you can just still use the principal BSDF and, and to, to utilizing this uh, to hook in the surface. And then what you can do here, we can use this emission underneath that tab. You can just pick the, pull the pure white. And then you still can dial that strength to five. So actually, eventually it works just like the, it, it was, but you actually have some other uh, roughness you can kind of dial it a little bit. But I would just recommend just simply do that. Um, yes, yeah, to you. So I'm gonna hook that back in. So we don't actually need any texture with this and uh, to do anything else. This is just general, even illuminated, uh, illuminated light or plane. So that should be the perfect. If we can get this thing in the in the uh, uh, in the real world, even better. Sometimes you just need to use that clean white illuminated background. So if you go, to, if I tap the zero on all my number key. So if I'm going to do the camera view, so now you can see there's a clean background going on here already. So yeah, so we got that. So next thing we wanted to do is to actually to get this background, uh, the, the floor to actually having some reflective features going on to ref, uh, getting a really nice reflection from the sh uh, shadow. So before I'm going to do that, I just want to actually temporarily I just disable this HDRI because since we already have a light light in the scene, so the moment I hit Control and the right click and the slide, it's gonna cut off this shader. So we have something going on here in the scene, right? And, and uh, actually, kind of pretty nice to illuminating the whole uh, whole image everything. Uh, if I'm going to adding a new texture of this floor, so I'm actually hit New. And I can actually change, change that to floor. Uh, then, then a couple of things I wanted to do is I definitely want to make it look very clean, uh, ru uh, less roughness. So I'm actually all the way to, I can say even uh, point 0.0. I don't want to do give a point point. Uh, actually, I wanted to do point a uh, 0 0.01. So it's pretty low, you know, as you can see, this is like a mirror, right? It's reflecting everything else. It looks like here, pretty nice shot. And the specular, I can actually drag to all the way to one. So this is like a perfect reflection. It feels like it's, it actually just feels like the backgrounds and the floors is, is just simply blend in, right? You don't see a line between there. I, if I select that, actually the, the horizon line in, the, in this floor actually there, but using this method, then you just seamlessly having a pure white background coming in there. Another trick that uh, I often to want people to see, to know, is that you can actually just changing the base color it's not 100% white. You can change it to white, or you can even change it to black. Look at that shadow. It looks actually more defined and clear uh, to having that. So this is just what's gonna happen if you, in the, in the real photography world, uh, it's studio as well, if you're using just a, a white uh, acrylic uh, sheet, uh, actually have kind of a milky type of a, it's not that, clear not that contrasty compared to a black acrylic sheet see that's just going to have uh, going to make it looks much better uh, you may wonder why we have to use them black well i th in, th in that case i don't really know too much about the science behind it but it just works in that for, for my experience so now we have all these scene built and uh let's see because let's see because we're already having have this entire uh, camera angles and perspective, everything is finished. So what do we want to do next? We want to build this uh, actual ribbon going on here, just trying to getting some stuff going on to giving a little bit more dynamic look. And another or another thing that I want to point it out is so in order to make this still image looks cool, one thing is we're introducing dynamic. And also we are using these leading lines to kind of leading the viewers to the subject, 
right? And the color contrast. There's a lot of stuff that you will pick or to learn uh, along your way. So you eventually will get much better on that. So, okay, so cool. So how to create an, uh, a floating ribbon over here. So what I will do here, I just gonna go to the top view. I'm gonna do uh, the solid mode. I shift A, just quickly add a plane. Right, we have a plane. I hit S and X. It's gonna get it like the strips over here. That's it. And then I'm going to go to the uh, grab it. Uh, hit X, come here, and I'm gonna go tap. Go to the edit mode. Control R to actually adding a couple of loop cut. Don't add too much, so because you want to have a good control over it. And then we having having this already now. So next thing we want to do here. This is still like this. We're going to do R, hold the control, just kind of rotate it 90 degree. And then we go to the top view, top view, go to the tab again. So we have all the things selected, right? And now we have a proportion editing uh, turn on, or you can just using the shortcut key O to turn it on. And you select one end, making sure they are, this is in the X-ray mode. So hit Alt Z to go into the x-ray mode and from the top. So you select the one end, right? Now you can just simply grab, uh, hit the G to grab it. So, and then at the same time, you see this is only within that circle, your your editing is going to be effect. Uh, out of that circle, that's gonna stay the same. So what I, we can do here, we can just simply scrolling up or down the, the middle mouth well, and then we're actually having uh, more control over that. Then at the same time, you can just grab the, the each point, just kind of getting the, the stuff that you want or the shape you want. So we can just select that and uh, we can just grab that. You know, there, there's a tons of options that or, or stuff that you can do, just make it uh, kind of like cool. Or or because we don't have too much point at this moment, and actually turning on the proportion editing doesn't really help you too much, but I really want you to know that you can do that uh, while you're working on it. And then, and then next thing is you be like, uh, this is not really been one bow, it looks pretty chunky or anything. Well, next thing we're going to do is we're going to adding a, a subsurface modifier. We can do control two to suddenly having some smooth going on here. And then one kind of right click and the shape smooth. Okay. So if we go to the uh, render view, come back, we can have something going on here. But this one doesn't have any texture yet. So what we'll do is we're actually going to add a one new texture. We can just call it uh, red. And then we just change the color to a red color. Right, and, and then we can just select this one and bring it in over here into the scene. And if we tap the zero on our number pad key, so we will see this come in. And then you, if you double hit R, you can actually kind of rotate it and scale it down, whatever. So you have tons of stuff going on here. But now if you realize that, notice this, oh, this doesn't look good. It's, this doesn't have that, that uh, the, the textures or anything compared to our reference image. That it doesn't have that clean, nice look. Well, what's the reason for that? Well, the, the actual the reason is because the lighting, all right? So one thing I want you to notice that we are having a, uh, in the camera, we have a, actually a texture in there, right? And our opacity was one because I'm trying to give you a good, uh, let me turn, actually turn, temporarily turn, hide this real quick. So if, let me go back to camera. You can see here, we have a background image and the opacity is one. So if I'm dragging this down, up and down, you will see no difference. Uh, uh, what's the reason? Is because we, in our cylinder, the object, over here, cylinder, we also have a textures going on here. So if we go to the monitor, and then we are project this texture through our camera right here. So in here, so we can see everything like that. Because if we go to the solid mode, actual mode, you, it's not that 
defined model items is because it's a texture project on the top. So what we can do, we can temporarily uh, hide. If we hide this uh, texture, uh, how to do? It? Just unhook that. Uh, then there's nothing going on here, right? If I'm a hook this thing on, it's in here. So what I'm trying to say, uh, back, go back here. What I'm trying to say is that this actually not really reflecting the real light of the scene. It is because a picture uh, of a projection from a well lit images coming here. So the next thing I wanted to 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 really emphasize is this: uh, this image that we are shot in the studio is actually having two lights in the front. We have a background, uh, white background already is in our main light or uh, light that uh, having uh, directly impact for this subject. But we still need a front light to actually illuminating one side and the field light to illuminating that. So in this case, we actually, in our scene, we're missing these two lights, right? So we are going to adding another two lights. So shift A, adding a light and uh, we can just do the area light and and we can actually go to the top view hit S key and then hit R to rotate it oh. R let me drag, drag this thing down hit R to rotate it 90 degree and then just kind of drag it on the side okay and we can go to the power we can just uh, type a random number 5,000 uh, 5,000 volts and, and then we can just kind of rotate that we actually just gonna grab something like here and I believe the main light is actually the key light is actually from the right hand side so I'm gonna position it right here so now if I'm turn the uh, ribbon back and hit the number of key here so you can see we can actually have some and obviously this this light actually is way overpowering so we can just do maybe 1000 so you can see oh so we can get something going on here and double r you can positioning the the ribbon and just the way that you want and actually in this stage it takes quite a bit of time to really finding the the perfect angles and also the one that you want to do but you have the full control you can scale it down or you can just move whatever you want to do so that's kind of the whole idea but you already know how to do the ribbon so if you want to actually make it longer you can just go to the edit mode and hit that and the right click when you hit the control uh, shift uh, control right click you can actually just kind of continue adding extruding uh, things going around here in the scene. It just takes way longer uh, time to really building a beautiful flow ribbon. So what I have done here, I'm actually just going to to drag the original file that I have I've made in the scene to back to you to show you what's going on here. As you can see here, it's just they are just exactly same. We have the background light going on here. It's just a simple emission shader. And I'm actually using the strength of four instead of five. And then we have this uh, surface uh, roughness is, is close to zero and uh, is zero, and the uh, the spec specular is one. So I didn't change the color to these uh, to the pure black because it doesn't really matter because we're gonna using the actual photograph. But you can see here these are the ribbon that we're, we're actually built in the scene. And uh, if we we'll go to the, the camera view, you can see here, this is the one actually just very close to the camera trying to build a foreground uh, in the picture. So it looks pretty nice and, and neat. And the other, these two, two big light sources on the side is just what's actually illuminating the entire ribbon and whole set. So if we we'll go to the zero uh, number pack key, so go to the camera view, this is what you're going, going to get. Uh, when you actually render the, the image. So what the next we want to do is we obviously already have a subject uh, or this this photograph uh, been done. As you can see here, there's some roughly differences, but it doesn't really matter for this case. We already have that. We want to have image that without a cylinder, 
we can just kind of turn the cylinder off. And this is the kind of actual image that we want to render. And then we can bring this in the Photoshop and do a quick compositing in the Photoshop. So uh, you can just turn that, making sure you turn this uh, the viewport and also turn off that uh, in the render. So when you actually hit number 12, uh, F12, F12, oh, uh, hit control that. Uh, F well, since now I think the keyboard thing, but you're just gonna do the do to go actually go into okay. So this is a little bit stupid. So anyway, so you can just go to the render, go to the render image F12. So you can just only render that the background image with the ribbon on it. So you can basically just utilizing this. And in the Photoshop to get a quick render when you composite with the uh, in the Photoshop. So without really seeing doing anything here, but I'm gonna pull the Photoshop file back in here in our scene. So this is what we got. All right. So it's very simple. You just saw that uh, we were already. This is the original photograph that we have. We're been using, and the aspect ratio is uh, 16 by 9. Uh, so we have all this already laid, uh, uh, laid out and this is going to be our uh, CGI render from Blender. This is what it looks like. And I'm simply, because this is already been cut out product, I'm simply just going to drop this one underneath this layer group. So actually having this. Um, if some of you don't really know how layer works, it's basically it's just different uh, stacks of images or anything that whatever is on the top of the layer is going to cover whatever is underneath there. So as you can see here, some of the ribbons being beautifully cut, uh, cut out or being covered by the, by the top one. And also, this is called a layer mask. Uh, basically, how layer mask is is the you can see here the there was a white part basically is here is now going to be uh, revealed by the by the viewer if whatever is being covered in the black one well, not seen in the black so if I hit shift and the left click and I can see oh this is actual original image it looks like when I'm doing photograph when I finish that retouching. So if I having the layer mask on, that's going to be the one image that have a transparent background and having the CGI built background and a photograph. And this is eventually become a, a perfectly built uh, CGI compositing. And, and this is actually the end of our tutorials. And hopefully this is kind of short tutorials really help you going through the entire process of how to build a CGI compositing. I will say the lighting, the perspective are the most important key elements for a proper compositing. And I was hoping this tutorial is really going to help you to uh, free, uh, have more freedom in your creativity world so you can actually creating something that you probably never thought about it. And the CGI was originally uh, it was not. It was a lot of times been utilizing in this way to compositing with a photograph in the in professional photography world. So yeah, so just kind of spend your time to really understanding software and uh, developing your concept and uh, really bring them to real life. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.